Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. Human body and energy. We are all energies housed in physical bodies. That's what we are, energies. And when the physical body stops like an old car, the energy gets out and it walks away. Yes, well, I've had a, I've, I've had all sorts of things. I have a frozen shoulder, which um, oh, is not a, a kind of lead into to a song, um, but it's um, <laughs> and I I've, so I've been having work on this shoulder. But isn't it weird when you have something that happens to you, and then everybody you meet has got the same thing? Yes, it's like a car, isn't it? It's like when you yeah. buy a new car. And then you, you suddenly see loads of them. Or if you hear a name of somebody, and then you suddenly you hear that name it's the next day and for days afterwards. But I will say the wonderful thing is my swans are back and they've just had their babies. And oh. this year I had five of them. So I just pray and hope they keep safe because they're only tiddly biddly bits at the moment. Oh. So, you know, of course, earlier this year, I was telling you that my signets uh, had grown into, and they were getting their white coats. And now, of course, mum and dad have had five more babies. It's just fantastic. <gasps> yeah, it makes the world better, a better place to be in. Yeah, yes. it certainly does. I know it's been very weird, hasn't it? Yeah. But, you know. Strange world, strange world we live in. Very but, strange. Uh, very strange. And talking, talking about strange, well, we're going to be talking about Stranger Things, aren't we? With June Field. Yes. Yeah. Are we? Who, who's a wonderful healer. Yeah. Oh, yes. Is it strange? Is yes. life strange? I think what has happened, don't tell Sherry I'm saying this, but I think Sherry and Harriet might be oh, the well. same person. <laughs> yes. Because <gasps> we never see them together. No. Oh, no. There's only one of us left now. You and Debbie next year will be one of you yeah. left. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Very well, sad, sadly. No, it's quite nice with three of us, actually. It's a nice chat because I've missed you, Sherry. I haven't spoken to you for ages. I know. Ages and ages. Oh. I know. It's a funny old world, though, isn't it? I'm sure June will tell us all about this, your friend that's just about to come on, about yeah. you and about, you know, the world that we live in and how difficult it's become for a lot of people. Gosh, it really has. And I was with people this weekend and they were all saying, and it, it's, it needs to be talked about really because it's changed, it, I've changed completely in this pandemic. I've changed, I don't know, I don't know myself sometimes, you know, I think, how, how, what have I changed into? Do I, do I not want to do things anymore? Do I not want, you know, even, getting on a train and going somewhere, I think, oh, really? Yeah. And you, Why am I doing that? Why am I doing that? I've traveled all my life. Now I'm going to get quite philosophical here. Okay. There's always, there's always, there are always yeah. things, you know, like my mother's generation, you know, there was the war and all of that lot. And really, if you like, we are sort of second generation boomers. We've not had that big, big thing that happened in yeah. our lives. And it's happened at this time of our lives. Yeah. And I, and I mm. wonder how I wonder how many people, when the, the war started, who were in their their sixties, how they felt about it. Yeah. You know, it, it, because we we know how we feel about it because we're communicating, but they didn't have the communication that we have now. Well, funnily and, enough, my great grandfather was in the First World War and the Second World War. I mean, he wasn't called up in the Second World War, but he lived through it. So it, it's, we've had a long, long time, as you've said, without anything really, anything yeah. big happening fast in this country. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think the fact that we were all connected, still very connected, we knew yeah. what was going on everywhere. We, we know what's going on everywhere, whereas before yeah. we didn't. And I think, you know, it, it was only, we were given the news or whatever we heard, but now we, we know what's going on everywhere. So perhaps it's a, a bit of too much information. And I think that 24 hour news is terrifying. Mm -hmm. And also you kind of be addicted to watching it. And yeah. you think, I'm so 
watch it then don't listen but you can't help it no i always look online to, to the papers every day and i think well, why am i doing this yeah we all know there's such a spin on that news mm. that you know it's all be all, all for hype not, i was going to say entertainment value but it and a lot of it is but it's all hyped up and it's spun to kind of grab so that you and then you read it and you go oh no that's not what they meant to actually that's not true then you're cross because you even watched it but we're all addicted to it. And I think that's what's wrong. I, th- I feel for our kids. Yeah. Because they're, they're going into another world that, you know, might even be worse than this for that kind of, you know, information, too much information. We switch the telly off, but then it comes up on our phone. All so you can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. Yeah. And you can't have a phone, as you know. You know, I'd go insane without my phone. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, here we have somebody who's our next guest, who in fact doesn't need a phone to communicate with anybody. Because <laughs> she's, she's, that was a good segue, wasn't it, Sherry? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> because she can get them by herself. It is the wonderful June Field. Do, 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 do. June, it's so lovely to see you. How have you been? Tell us everything. Oh gosh, I've been good. I've been busy, as always, and it's just been great. I've just been getting back into the swing of things with this COVID business, but always busy, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment up here in Scotland, that's for sure. No, but (laughs) Sherry was just saying before about how COVID has changed everyone, weren't you, Sherry? Yeah, I was with people this weekend, actually, June, and uh, we were doing this uh, gig, and just it was just weird. One... As we all sat down and we were all having a bit of something to eat before we did the thing, and we were all saying how this two and a half years has completely changed us as people. And I I have changed. I have completely changed. And, I, and I, sometimes it worries me. And sometimes I think, well, actually, maybe uh, you've come to a part in your life where you see things differently. Maybe this has made me see things differently. And maybe this was the right time because instead of chasing my tail and going, oh, I've, I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to work and I've got to do, I kind of, I'm laid back from that. Although of course I've got to work, I've got to earn money and so I'm not being stupid, but it's kind and I, and I, but it, everybody, <laughs> as we went round the table, they all had their own story about this change. Do you think that's across? Oh, def- definitely across the board because we're all on the conveyor belt of the roundabout of life and that we were all thrown off of it and we all had to stop. And now lots of people don't want to get back onto that conveyor system. It's like, no, wait a minute, I don't, because um, I've been thrown off. You get into a pattern in life that you do that, you do this, you travel here, you go there, you're just busy. And when you're not so busy, you put things into perspective as in what's important and what's not, and you separate the wheat from the chaff. I think everybody's done that. Every single person. I, I've, I've changed as well. I would be traveling all over the place. I'm quite yeah. happy. I'm quite happy at home. Yeah, except there is the other side of me that thinks, oh, come on, you know, get, <laughs> get, a up together, get your <laughs> ass off that chair, and, you know, stop being, stop being stupid and, and, and not, not going anywhere. And so there is that other bit of me that, uh, that it now frustrates me that I've turned into, or, or shall I say lost my will, will to go out there and fight. Yeah, I don't think you've lost your will. I think that you've, find, you've put things into perspective about how tired you get, you know, while you run around, you know, what happiness is, to to be able to sit still and also to be a bit choosy, a wee bit more choosy about, you know, do I really want to do that? Do I really? Will I make the effort? And a lot of people are saying no. Um, (laughs) And and that's the the way of the world just now. We have all been thrown off the conveyor belt. We're all separating the wheat from the chaff and we're all deciding what's important and what's not important. And it's and it's a good thing in a sense. Because I always say it's like a hamster's wheel. And so 
you know, which I think we've been on as well. And when you're on a hamster, you miss stuff, don't you? You miss opportunities, actually. Sometimes yeah. when you sit back and do nothing, you can see things very clearly. I mean, that's that's my experience anyway. Well, when you, when you step back on the peripheral viewpoint of your life, you can see things so differently. And I think COVID's done that to everyone. They've thrown us all off, off of that hamster wheel, and you're looking at it and think, do I really want to get back on that wheel? Mm-hmm. And so we've got things into perspective. It's a discussion for us today. <laughs> but I was just about to say, the other thing is that I find really weird, and this is another thing everybody said, I cry all the time. Everything anybody says to me, I burst into tears. And I, I get upset so quickly. And I think, now what is that? What, what am I doing? Am I getting rid of stuff? Am I... I don't understand that. I've always been emotional anyway and ridiculously oversensitive about every single thing. Mm. But it's wanting to cry. And I think, now that, I because I analyse everything and I think, why am I wanting to cry all the time? You know, not even, not even really, you know, bad things about losing my brother. Of course I would cry. But, it, you know, <laughs> you got to show me a nice lolly that I didn't want and I burst into tears. <laughs> I think it's... You know, the dabber didn't want that one. You've lost a bit of control of your oh, life. Okay. And so therefore it's frustrating. But then also COVID's had such an impact on everyone and lots of people have passed and died and we're careful and we're more vigilant about what we do and we're more afraid about, you know, who we interact with, where we go, what's the safety like, etc. Not so much now, we're coming out of it. But before, yeah. you know, we put ourselves under so much strain for that two years as, as in, mm-hmm. am I going to be safe? What's this about? Do I want to get it? You know, then things are starting to come out. And so you're picking and choosing. And so you think to yourself, my gosh, I don't want to do that. And you get emotional about it. It's adapting and adjusting to a new normality. Well, welcome to the club. I think everybody's the same. We're all just the same. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think that this um, pandemic, you know, was a spiritual thing? Do, do you think the world needed to just stop? Yes, I do think the world needed to stop. But, you know, I think we could have done it a different way rather than COVID because it's taken a lot of people's lives and it's not great. But it certainly has, in a sense, allowed people to get a view of what their lives were like before they had to stop. And they're very reluctant to get back into those lives again or they'll be changing them. And that's adapting and adjusting. A lot of people don't want to go back to the lives that they had before. Um, But I think that COVID stopping us is, you know, they could have done it in a different way. Those on the other side could have done it in a different way if they wanted us to stop. Not COVID. Okay. Yeah. June, you're a fabulous healer. And you must have done a lot of healing over that two-year period as well. Oh, I do a lot of healing, to be honest, Dion, many different people and I've been doing it for years and years and years. And it's something that I was born with. And it's about energy shifting and moving. And I've, I've done healing on many people from um, Tony Hadley to Toya to, you know, um, Neil, Neil Young, all of these people and royal family, etc. People get in touch with me and they ask me to send out some healing. I was actually up all night doing healing because my PA from Inverness had a massive stroke yesterday and her husband called me and she's in hospital and this the last 24 hours were crucial so I was up and down every two hours going into her energy moving it on and then coming back so I'll find out later today he's going to call me later on but it's just a matter of shifting energy and I've worked with energy for a long time and energy is your life force it's like you that's what keeps you going the momentum of we're all housed in physical bodies. And sometimes people get ill and so therefore their energy becomes stagnant. So if you can get into it and move it, the momentum of the body takes over after a little while and they get better. But someone who's terminally ill or at nearing the end of life, you have to keep going in and moving their energy every day because it doesn't move by itself. And it, it soothes people and it, it calms them and it makes them more comfortable 
for the end of life. So it's different ways of healing and energies. And I suppose that's what we've all done with, with children, our kids and our, our mothers. You know, when you fall over and you go kiss it better yeah. or just hold my hand or, or cuddle me after yeah. a, a fall, that, that's all energy, isn't it? It is. And uh, most people who are empaths, if somebody's not well, they can't help, even in COVID, they can't help but touch them in some way, whether it's a pat on the shoulder or whether it's just to take their hand and go, oh, you're okay. It's just a way of just giving energy back or boosting someone's energy on. A lot of people don't know that they're doing it, but they feel compelled to touch them. Even sitting and somebody's upset, you just put your hand over and touch their knee or go, oh, you're okay. Or they just feel compelled to touch its energy to energy to move it on, to give a bit of healing. And how do you do this, June? How do you how do you do this? I mean, at night when you're doing the healing, because you've been doing it um, on Neil at the moment, another Neil, because uh, he had a stroke as well. How how do you actually do this? Well, I like to get a bit of them, a little bit of hair or something that's connected to them that just gets me straight into their energy, and then I just plug myself in. It's the same way as if I do read or read someone's energy I would just plug myself in I'm all over you like a rash a bit like the Star Trek tractor beam you just don't know it and I just plug in and when I'm plugged in I can feel what's happening I can feel the energy I can feel where it is I can feel how stagnant it is and I just sit and start moving it a bit like pushing it around the body and then if it gets stuck I'll start pushing it the other way and then go the other way again until it moves freely and smoothly Amazing. Because I know that um, recently a friend of ours phoned you and said that, they, that their partner was seriously ill and the partner felt the healing that you were giving to her. And, re and she felt that it turned her around at that moment when she thought she wasn't going to make it. It was obviously, it was Linda, Linda Lasardi. And yes. uh, I was introduced to Sam Kane from a mutual friend and saying, you know, can you help Linda? She's in hospital. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, let's sit in her energy. I thought, you know, I'll just sit in her energy for 20 minutes because she's such a gentle wee thing. She's actually a fighter. She's quite a stubborn lady. <laughs> and so I sat in her energy. She didn't know this was happening. And Sam interacted with me and I sat in her energy at a set time for about 20 minutes. And then he called her at the hospital and she had her ma oxygen mask down off her face. And she said, I'm going to get better. I just know I'm going to get better. The oxygen mm -hmm. levels in her blood um, were not good, but they seemed to turn around and they started to build back up again. And so she didn't need to go on a ventilator. And that was the worry at that time. So it's just a matter, but she was fit and healthy. She just needed a little bit of a push with the energy. And then the momentum of the body takes over and heals itself. Uh -huh. It was very, very weird because I asked, I asked June, I said to June, can you, can you help with Neil? And um, he, he was, you know, he's been in quite a bad way. And the first day that she um, did it or got, got his nails or something, I can't remember what it was. And he, the next day he said it was such a weird thing happened to him because she said to me, ask him how he felt after 10 o'clock. And, and I didn't need to ask him. He said something weird happened last night. I said, what was that? <laughs> he said there was a man standing by the side of my boat who was shining a light, like a torch in my face. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and he said that no one else could see him. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is that amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. And people's, people's, people are all different. Their energies are different. Some are stronger than others. But everyone has the ability to heal. Every single mm -hmm. person. It's like learning to play the piano. If you want to play the piano, anyone can learn. You won't all be concert pianists, but you can learn to knock out tune. That's for sure. <laughs> so you, you've just got to um, tune into it, be aware of vibrations and just put your hand on someone with the intent to do some good. Everybody can yeah. do it. My daughter says I've got healing hands. And mm. when she had a headache when she was young, I used to put my hands on her head. And she said, Mommy, put your healing hands on me. Yeah. And I, I've never thought about it in that way. Yeah. But I suppose, as you said, it's the energy, isn't it? That it passes is. from one to another. And it, it's the intent as well. It's the intent. I find the biggest thing to try and get over, the biggest hurdle to try and get over when you're doing healing on someone is for them 
to relax and let go. Because if someone is really ill and they're used to running around on the hamster wheel, as you said, mm -hmm. they're used to, oh, I've gosh, I've got to get this done and why can't I do that? And what, they've got to be able to relax and allow the body to adapt, adjust and heal itself. And that's a big part of healing is just letting go and allowing the body to do its thing rather than trying to fight it and get on that hamster wheel again. That's the biggest hurdle that I have. I'll, yeah. I'll argue with people and say, you need to sit, you need to sit for 20 minutes. So I will usually stipulate if I'm doing healing, sit down for 20 minutes at a set time and I'll send out energy then because I know that you're sitting quietly rather than me chasing you around and trying to get over that hurdle to get into the energy. So, no, it is a wonderful thing. The human body and energy, we are all energies housed in physical bodies. That's what we are, energies. And when the physical body stops, like an old car, the energy gets out and it walks away. Amazing. That's incredible, June. And June, you, you're doing that as well as your psychic readings as well. So, mm -hmm. but you're, it's powerful on both levels, isn't it? Because it's all about energy and tuning in. It's all about getting into someone's energy. Again, plugging in. If I was doing a psychic reading for someone, I would just chat to them for a little moment. I get into their energy, you know, through their eyes, just through watching energy around them. And once I'm plugged into them, then I start to be aware of who's around them. Because some people think, oh gosh, their loved ones are sitting in my living room, but they're not. They're <laughs> around you. And I just plug into you and then a bit like, tuning in to a channel on a tv and then i'm aware of them and i'll pass them on to you so it's all again about energies and plugging into an energy and feeling it with um with zoom are you finding that because it's quite a relatively new phenomenon isn't it zoom do you find i know that you have pieces of people's hair or nails or whatever but can you sort of tell by looking at people what they're going through can you pick things up <laughs> yes when I do psychic readings through Zoom, um, I, once I've, I'm in your energy by just looking in your eyes, I don't do phones, although I have done radio readings blind and that worked really well with celebrities and things, but I didn't like doing it. I like to see what I'm doing. And yeah. once I'm in the energy, I start to hear, feel and see. I don't need to be connected with a piece of them. But when I'm doing healing energy, because I have a, a spirit room here, at home and there's a lot of things being done in that room there's been a lot of people in there many people from many walks of life and I've built up energy in there so any little piece of hair that I have from someone I will put it in that room because I do a lot of work in there and so it's constantly getting energy all the time and then I go in in the evening and I really blast it I blast the energy out and I obviously scared Neil a little bit with them, sending people <laughs> to the foot of his bed, but, right. and he didn't quite understand it, but someone was there looking after him, so. Amazing. Really, really yeah. Good. He got, and then he was on a, an exercise bicycle. I mean, even though he couldn't do it himself, he, he, he was doing it himself, but I mean, it's it, lying on his back, you know, they, they had him using his legs anyway i mean it, it's all incredible june thank you so much for coming on you you're really interesting i think he sherry needs some healing i think you need a big cuddle sherry by the look of things you do well that's life uh, uh, well i'll send out something to, to you tonight sherry you're hoping it's not a man that comes and shines a torch in your face <laughs> that, that wouldn't be so good but i will definitely send something out to you this evening a real man <laughs> yeah that, oh. that, will, that will probably work um yeah. thank you thank you Jim. oh it's thank lovely you. Thanks. Thanks for you girls thank Anytime. you Don. take Don. care Don. will you will you come back on and give us all a reading of course of course thank i you. will remember you got to take the good with the bad that's yeah. fine <laughs> we will of course we trust you we trust you thank you take darling. care lovies thank bye. you bye. soon bye, bye. bye. So, oh, isn't she amazing? Well, I, I mean, it depends how you feel about certain things yeah. like that. But, you know, you must have done that with, you do that with your grandchildren. You hold them all the time, yeah. don't you? You want to feel yeah. them. And that's their energy that makes yeah, you of course. feel better, yeah. doesn't it? It, it just know. absolutely has to do with energy. Mm. Um, yeah. But then some people are open and some people are shut. 
exactly. And you know, thing, isn't it interesting that we are prepared to believe that, you know, here we are talking on Zoom, that, it, that, that it's because of all the, you know, the, the satellites are around, but realistically, it's this kind of same thing with, with psychic energy. I mean, why do we have to be told that it, it's different? I always feel like that, yeah. it's different. It, it should be the same. Why shouldn't we just reach each other by thinking of somebody? Well, we do. <laughs> well, I think sometimes we do, but we're, we're very wrapped up in our own head, you know, mm -hmm. so we can't reach out. We don't know how to anyway. A lot of us don't know how to. And I think people like June try to show you how. Yes. Yeah. And you either take that or you don't. You either believe it or you don't. In, and there's nothing she can do other than say, this is what I think. And you take that on board or you don't take it on board. It's a, yeah. a fun world, isn't it? You, you want to believe there's something. There's something else. That's how yes. we believe that, don't we? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think different dimensions, because it's like we said, you know, you think about somebody. Like I thought about a friend of mine I hadn't seen for donkey's years you know and then suddenly out of the blue she sent me a message on Facebook and I thought why did I think of her so strongly just before she sent me a message and I think things like that happen. Yeah I mean I talk to my brother all the time I talk to my dad all the time you know and I just think you you, you find your own you have to find your own way nobody can tell you how to do it. Yes exactly it's an individual thing. Anyway, we, we've got to go because yeah. we could go on like this for ages. We've got a great guest on uh, Friday. We've we got the wonderful Jane Gordon, who yeah. is fabulous. And she's going to be talking about her new book that's just gone into paperback, which is How Not to Get Old. Oh. <laughs> I think we probably, um, we probably all need that um, <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> so we'll see you on Friday. See you Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.